Hi cuties. So, um, Knox, aka Princess Peculiar, has talked me into trying to do the video every day in March challenge, which <laughs> I'm gonna attempt it. I have a lot of ideas and I haven't created nearly as many videos as I would have liked to because I'm an anxious little rabbit and I'm nervous on camera. So I wanted to try and change that. I feel like the month of vlogging is a really good way to start. So I'm just going to start basically knocking out all sorts of easy video ideas, um, basically, you know, one day at a time. And I might end up go, going back and redoing videos later um, with more time and editing and production value. But for now, I'm just going to go ahead and get a whole bunch of like ideas out there um, through March. So I couldn't really decide what I wanted to do with my first one. I had a bunch of ideas. Um, and so I'm actually going to push those back a little bit because today I ended up having a bunch of appointments. So I was out all day and ended up doing some shopping. And so I thought it would be easy to just do like a little haul video of some of the things that I picked up today, um, which I stopped at H&M and got some cute clothes things. And then I stopped at um, the drugstore and picked up some like bath items basically so i thought that would be kind of fun so um i'll start with the bartels items basically because they're on top and also the like the lighting here is really bad i'm like right in the middle of a sunbeam that i'm trying to avoid <laughs> but i'm gonna try and sit in front of it and hope for the best um so for the bartel stuff the first thing that I cracked open immediately because I was excited about it was this kind of oversized like hand for scale compact um, and it's a mirror compact but it is an intentionally oversized mirror compact with one side being a standard mirror and the other side being a five times magnification mirror and um, because I'm so nearsighted a lot of the time I have a little bit of difficulty with my eye makeup and so I have like a handy dandy 5x mirror that always sits in my vanity and I've got another 5x mirror that's located up um in another like convenient spot mounted on my vanity and um so I just really like having magnifier mirrors around and the only issue has been that like this can pop off but it's still kind of huge and I don't really like to try and stick it into a purse it just feels like that's really bulky so I was super excited that I found this like flat really portable and in pink cute little magnifier mirror thingabob so I was super excited about that and it has that nice feeling kind of um it's plastic but like that silicone feeling plasticky stoof and then oh that's right I also stopped by the fabric store and picked up neck ribbons so I'll get to those in a second I'll just stay on top here but um I also got this cute little Oh, the packaging feels so weird. Um, so this is like a little multi-tool for, um, I don't know how you want to describe it, exfoliating, I guess, body exfoliating. And this is only like $3.50 at Bartel Drugs. Um, it looks like it's just their house brand. But it has like a little scrub brush, and then it has like one of the rough metal pads, and a um, sandpaper pad, and a pumice stone. So I liked that it had all that kind of variety. Um, I tend to get like minor small like blackheads and things like that and rough skin so especially i know winter is almost over but especially during winter that's really handy to have around and then so there's that and then i got two sets of these because i was excited about them and also for making it really easy to tell whose is whose but they had kits of um microfiber cleaning cloths. They're selling them as cleaning cloths, but multi-fiber, microfiber cloths are super, super multi-purpose. So um, they had these like rainbow kits and it was two for 10 bucks. So I got one kit that is like pink through red, through orange, through yellow. And then I got the other kit, which is green through blue, through purple. And I of course loved the like pink and lavender and blues. And so I'm actually gonna set aside the um, the greens, orange, and yellows for Chris and Joe to use and or for cleaning cloths, but I'm mostly going to use these actually for um, bathroom like face cleansing cloths. Microfibers are really, really good gentle exfoliators, and so that's been my absolute favorite thing for like um, in the shower. I can put on a little bit of like makeup remover lotion onto my eyes and, you know, just use a wet microfiber cloth to gently wipe away my eye makeup. 
and then I can use a regular face cleanser to get the rest of my foundation and stuff broken down and wipe that away with the microfiber cloth. And it is starting to get a little bit dirty with mascara, so they definitely need to be washed every couple of showers, but, um, which is why I would like to have a big stash of them. But they're also super handy for cleaning. Um, and I've been using the Fly Lady system for, for learning how to clean regularly and make it part of your daily routines, which I'm gonna talk about in a later video, all my organization obsession crap. But um, she actually sells on her website these specialty, like kind of oversized microfiber cloths because you know she and, and everyone in her little like cleaning cult has gotten so obsessed with using microfiber cloths to clean everything forever because they're just really effective at um, picking up dirt naturally without needing a whole lot of extra cleansers. So these are just super useful and it was really cheap. And Dan, so that was everything from Bartels. But I'm just gonna, cool, onto the floor with you. That's out of the way-ish, except for the breakable things. Um, so then let's just go through the stuff that I picked up at Stitches because this will be quick. Um, I just got myself some new neck ribbons. Um, every time I wear, like this one kind of has like a built-in shabbat, which I really like, but I might still tie a ribbon over the top of it anyway. But anytime I'm wearing some sort of like Peter Pan collar or high-necked high blouse, I really like to have um, a neck ribbon sometimes tied around and then with a brooch in the center a lot of the time. I think that's a really cute... It's a very Lolita or Larm kind of thing to do. And so I basically just went to the fabric store and picked up some of the really cute, more sturdy looking ribbons and laces and just basically like kind of measured it around my neck, decided how much would be a, a safe length and then bought a bunch of different ribbons. Um, so I got this cute, this is basically like a cream beige lace with a blue and white striped um, gross grain ribbon threaded through it and I loved that and then I got another very similar one that just has like a white and beige ribbon threaded through it and I just like the way that that kind of looks overall has a really nice texture and then I got some red velvet ribbon um, velvet ribbons are really good as neck ribbons because the ends are always finished of the the sides and then when you cut the ends um, you can do the thing where you cauterize it with um, a lighter and that works really well so if you want to you can like hold it you can bend it in half and then cut it at an angle to get the little um, forked tip if you like that or you can just cut it at a straight or an angle and then just kind of quickly run a lighter over it and that'll cauterize it and it's like no matter how many times I've tied and untied bows um, with velvet ribbons or gross grains something really thick they just last forever they're super durable they never start to try and fray so I got red velvet and then I got this dusty pink velvet that's also really pretty and that's a really lovely dusty rose shade and then, I couldn't resist. I know I got more than one blue, but I was excited about them. I found this blue floral print, which like it's a little bit unique and I'm trying to decide whether I'm actually gonna make some of these into just straight up chokers and pull out some uh, jewelry findings and like make it into a choker with a bow that's like stitched down in the front as opposed to just tying them around my neck. Um, but this one just had like a really pretty kind of Liz Lisa vintage-ish floral pattern that I fell in love with. And I love that it had the cute scallop edge as well. So I could even see myself like using this and then layering white ribbon over the center or, you know, all sorts of nonsense. But I thought it was really cute and kind of he make arrow. Okay, that was everything I picked up at Stitches and that was pretty cheap. You know, ribbon by the yard can get very expensive. Sewing supplies tend to be pretty pricey, but when you're only buying about a yard, it's not a whole lot. And then let's get into the H&M crap, which is kind of the exciting fashion -y thing. So this totally stole my heart immediately and I just had to have it. It's so ridiculous, but it's a really sturdy key ring. And then it has a, the tiniest ever mascara, eyeliner and brow gel. And <laughs> it was six bucks, which is a little bit overpriced because this is probably like basically one time use. These are really, really tiny samples. But still, I thought that this was just a fabulous concept because once in a blue moon, there's a day when I'm in such a hurry or I have to do multiple things in the day that I just don't get to do makeup. 
and I am out and about later in the day and I just feel really like naked without, you know, some makeup on. And when it comes to my confidence and feeling self-conscious about my face, like I'm not super insecure about a lot of my face. Um, I like to contour a lot because I don't like the way that my chin is so round and I, um, but the biggest thing for me is just like, aside from doing the full face like I like to do, uh, having mascara on my eyelashes because my eyelashes are white, it, it makes me really self-conscious to go out without it. I feel like it just makes my eyes look kind of weird that you can't see my eyelashes at all naturally. They're so pale. So just having like a little bit of mascara and then especially if I can have eyeliner as well and kind of like reshape my eyes the way that I like to do. I'm not even wearing mascara today. Today was mostly work focused, so I'm not even like cute today. I just threw on some um, color corrector and then some CC cream and mascara. I don't even have eyeshadow on, let alone eyeliner. And I keep putting on lip gloss, but it keeps coming off. I had too much like professional boring. This is my grown up cosplay is what I'm wearing right now. It's like, a, this is a work blouse. It's actually a body line blouse that um, Belladonna gave me, which I super love, but I thought it was pretty work appropriate, surprisingly. It has kind of that, that feel. So I wore a gray blazer over the top of it and it looked pretty profesh, totes profesh. But yeah, so I thought that this was a really fabulous, like, as for what I need, like brow gel, not as much, whatever. I don't care if my brows are white, whatever. But uh, the rest of them, the mascara and eyeliner is totally like, if, if I had to be dropped on a deserted island with, you know, only two things, it would probably be the mascara and eyeliner. So these are just gonna be like my, I'm gonna actually attach this to my key ring and just put it on my usual key ring and just have them with me and never use them unless I suddenly find myself in a situation where I don't have them and my face feels naked and then I will be able to resolve that. So I don't know, That's it's it's so dumb, but it made me really happy just as a concept that somebody else like knew that feel that like that being having to throw yourself out the door and then later on run into a bathroom and do like an emergency eye makeup. <laughs> that made me happy. And then the rest of this is all clothes. I noticed when I was going through my sock drawer that most of my socks are really, really dark. And so it's actually harder for me to put together all of my various pastel outfits because I just don't have enough pastel leg wear. So I was just kind of on the hunt for it today. And then, um, so H&M just had a bunch of stuff on sale. Uh, they had $5 knee highs. And so I found these really pretty, they're like a gray blue and they have cables on them and they are actually a wool blend. So they're kind of warmer winter socks. They're knee highs which I definitely prefer over the knees or thigh highs when I can get them, but still, they're cute, they're knee highs, and then I've been seeing a lot of, um, like as far as trendy stuff, I just got some new Larm magazines that are sitting right next to me um, from my babe friend Iris from my birthday, which is super sweet of them, and um, so I have been like reading through them and all of my outfits for the past like week or two have been inspired by Larm. I feel like I should take off my glasses because they're reflecting, they're glaring so badly from the window. Anywho, so I've been wearing stuff inspired almost solely by Larm magazine for like the past week or two, basically since my birthday when Iris gave me those magazines. And then I also found a couple, I had bought a couple of Larm magazines from someone online before that. So that's like all I've been wearing is Larm K. Um, and they're really big into knee-high socks paired with um, pencil skirts or skater skirts, like anything that's like a thigh-high skirt right now, which is not usually like the thing as I know it. It's usually like a thigh-high sock with a mini, mini skirt. Um, but I kind of liked it. I liked it more than I expected because a lot of the time I don't like how knee-high socks look on me. I feel like they're not as flattering as over the knees, which make your legs look longer. Um, but eh, I'm just kind of into it, so I'm trying it out. And so I brought these. And then we've got more sakus. Let's show you the other knee highs I got. I got a two pack of knee highs for five bucks. So that's a really good deal. And these are mohair blends. So they're super like soft, um, but they were just super plain, no cables. And it's just like a ribbed knit with one being wine red and the other one being like a pale medium gray. Um, and these are also knee highs. So I like those two. And then I got one more set of sakus, and these are actually just ankle socks. Um, like, they live to be about like mid calf, like 
they're not knee high for sure, but they're probably about, you know, high ankle or could be folded over their mid calf. But these were really cute colors. Oh, they have lint on them. That's not cool. Um, but there's like a really, really dusty salmon-y pink color. And then there's a really, really dusty gray blue color. They had a lot of like gray, blue and ash dusty pink. I noticed so I guess that's like the trend right now because H&M I feel like they pick like five trends and then just do every single variation on those things before they like turn over to the next big thing I was super disappointed because I was hoping to find pom-pom earrings I've been super into those and have been seeing them all over the place and I bought the swan kiss pom-pom earrings but they have kind of little lavender palms instead of gold heart hoops and I wanted some like huge giant ass pom-pom earrings but I'm just not finding them anywhere around here, so I'm probably just gonna have to make some. And then, I'm such a bargain hunter, I swear I don't buy anything unless it has a red sticker on it. But I found um, two pairs of ballet flats in my size. And this pair of really simple navy blue ones. Oop, all right, now they're gone. These are just navy blue, really simple, rounded toe. I don't ever like pointed toes things. They look super witchy. I only get those in like witchy shoes. Um, and then I got some rounded toe. They're like nude, but like me nude. So like pale dusty rose. So I got these and these were like 12 bucks and the blue ones are only five bucks. So I was super pleased. Um, I love these H&M ballet flats partly because they're so excessively cheap because when it comes to ones that are this kind of fabric, they're like suede basically, which is really cute, but it um, attracts a lot of dirt. And then they quickly, like the, uh, the pile, that's what it's called. The pile of like the, the suede faux furry stuff just wears off and they get destroyed. So I had another pair that were basically like this identical design with the little bows on them and a darker like camel brown and I probably got about a year of wear out of them before they just were so stained and dirty and disgusting and like running them through the washer wasn't doing anything. So it was just time to literally throw them out. So that's, you know, five bucks for about a year of wear out of shoes that are pretty darn comfortable. Um, so I, that's totally worth it to me. I'm fine with replacing these basically every year with whatever is available. And I just like to have several pairs of ballet flats around for like super easy to wear shoes because I tend to abuse my feet in the city with all this broken ground and high heels and uh, like having a pair of emergency flats with you is super handy for days when you just can't take it anymore. Um, or like I try to alternate. I've heard that the healthiest thing to actually do for your feet is to alternate between like a heel height and a perfect flat um, or like different heel heights because then you're not putting stress on the balls of your feet all the time, but you're also not putting stress on the heel of your feet all the time. Um, and I know arch support is good if you have it in shoes, but you're basically wanting to make sure that you don't wear down your feet in one particular spot with anything too extreme in either direction. So I like to have ballet flats to make sure I get my feet off days or I have something to change into if need be. And that was everything I got today. So thank you for sitting through my super rambly haul. I was pleased with all of the all of the goodies. Um, and then I actually, uh, it's so funny because I just finally, um, on Sunday, I ha finally had my little birthday party, which I planned very, very poorly. I only remembered to invite like 30 people, uh, <laughs> which is not good compared to the amount of people I would have liked to have invited and or had show up. And we just went out to the arcade at South Center Mall and it was a grand old time. And it was a relatively small group of people that showed up over the course of the evening, but it was, it was fun. Um, so we just did like a really little thing, but that was just on February 28th. It's now March 1st and now it's my babe friend's birthday. <laughs> so today is Iris's birthday and we're going to do, um, we have a date planned. I don't think we've quite nailed out all the details yet because they're still at work, but, um, and I just got home from doing a bunch of dumb grown up stuff. But yeah, we're going to have do something cute together and, and have a grand old time. And I'm probably going to cook them dinner. But yes. So I think that'll about sum it up for today. Yes. Uh, tomorrow, I'm debating whether I want to go into all of my like systems, how I choose to organize everything. And um, I'm the type of person who likes a lot of structure when it comes to learning something or trying to acquire a new skill. Um, I like stuff that's really, really linear a lot of the time. And I have all these 
dumb little like idiosyncratic quirks like I don't like to watch TV shows out of order like when it comes to I'm a big Star Trek fan but I've only watched all of the original series and part of Next Generation because I like need to watch them chronologically in order even though people tell me that some of them are absolutely terrible and I should just not watch them at all <laughs> and I have I own Bioshock 1, 2, and Infinite. I've only played some of Bioshock 1, and I briefly cracked Bioshock Infinite because it was a different world and that made it okay in my brain. But then I put it down again because I Bioshock 2 has not even been opened. It is still shrink-wrapped, and I still hoard it because I fucking love Bioshock, and I love the whole franchise. The whole series is gold, but uh, I get too spooked out by scary games, even though I love them, so I can only play it in small doses, so I haven't even beaten... Bioshock 1 yet because of like emotional distress that horror games give me but I love it. I need to find someone to like sit down and play horror games with me all the time because I just can't do it alone. I'm, I'm a huge fancy but they're like my favorite genre of games. It's really dumb. Uh, and then the same goes for I have Batman Arkham Asylum and Arkham City. Is it? Yeah whatever it's called. But I still it's, Arkham City is still shrink wrapped. <laughs> same deal. Haven't finished Arkham Asylum only like 20% through Arkham Asylum and refuse to open Arkham City until I finish it. I was actually like briefly dating one of the guys that worked on Arkham City and I think he gave me a copy. That was a thing. Or somebody gave me a copy, whatever. But yes, so I am absolutely ridiculous. So point being, tangent aside, um, when I'm trying to learn things or create better habits, I love a lot of structure. And so I have all these systems and um, like plans that I follow that other people have come up with when it comes to um, like my studying Japanese and learning how to like clean as part of my daily routines and maintain my apartment and you know stay on top of life tasks and then my day planning I have my Erin Condren and stuff so there's just like I, I really like stuff like that I love classes I love systems I love resources like that that help you really get good at a particular thing and so I'm gonna kind of go I have a big long list I'm going to go through probably tomorrow and leave lots of links below in the description and talk about it um, and ramble on forever like I just almost did right now. But <laughs> thank you so much for watching. Um, look forward to videos hopefully every day in March. We'll see how it goes. Um, and I love you guys so much. Have a good rest of your day. Bye.